Let us start our detailed inspection at the left forward fuselage. Ensure that the angle of attack probes are in good condition and verify that the first officer and captain's static ports are clear. Check the condition of the avionics equipment vent air inlet valve. Ensure that the oxygen bay is closed and that the oxygen overboard discharge indicator is in green. Note, a toilet servicing door may be installed in this area. If installed, verify that it is closed. We will now move along to the nose section. Ensure that the pitot probes are in good condition and verify that the standby static ports are clear. Ensure that the total air temperature probes are in good condition. Check the radome for good condition and verify that it is properly latched. Ensure that the forward avionics compartment door is closed. If ground power is not being supplied to the aircraft, ensure that the ground electrical power receptacle door is closed. Let us move on to the nose landing gear area. At this location, you should ensure that the nose wheel chocks are in place. The wheels and tires are critical components of a thorough preflight. Check the tires for any cracks, damage or delamination. Inspect the wheels and ensure that they are in good condition. Ensure that the nose gear structure is in good condition. Also verify that the taxi, takeoff and runway turnoff lights are in good condition and ensure that their lens covers are clean and unbroken. Inspect the hydraulic lines and electrical wires to ensure that they are in good condition. Inspect the wheel well and ensure that the safety pin is removed. Move on to right forward fuselage. Ensure that the right and aft avionic compartment doors are closed. Inspect the avionic equipment vent air outlet valve to ensure that it is in good condition. Check that the first officer and captain's static ports are clear. Check the general condition of the angle of attack probe. Inspect the forward cargo door and selector panel. Move on to the lower center fuselage. Ensure that the potable water drain panel is closed and inspect all antennas in this area for good condition. Check the general condition of the drain mast and ensure that the low power and high power ground connection doors are closed. Check the general condition of the ram air inlet flap. Also check the condition of the anti-collision light. Ensure that the center tank magnetic fuel level indicator is flush and that the pack air intakes and 
outlets are clear. Let us move on to the right center wing. Check that the yellow hydraulic bay door and the fuel panel are closed. Ensure that the inner tank magnetic fuel level indicators are flush and secured. and that the inner tank fuel water drain valve is not leaking. Inspect the landing light and slat one to ensure that they are in good condition. Let us move along the wing to the left side of the number two engine. Check that the oil fill access door is closed and latched. Ensure that the thrust reverser sleeves are closed and the blocker doors are properly stowed. Check that the fan cowl doors are closed and latched. Ensure that the drain mast is in good condition and has no leaks. Check the condition of the engine inlet, nose cone spinner, and fan blades. Check the metal blade edges for any damage and the blade tips for any delamination. Let us move along to the right side of the number two engine. Check that the vent inlet is clear. Check that the pressure relief door and the start valve handle access door are closed. Ensure that the thrust reverser sleeves are closed and that the blocker doors are properly stowed. Check that the fan cowl doors are closed and latched. Inspect the pylon area for good condition and verify whether the access panel is closed. Ensure that the turbine exhaust area is clear. Move on to the right wing leading edge. Ensure that slats 2, 3, 4, and 5 are in good condition. Ensure that the refuel coupling is closed and confirm that the inner and outer cell's magnetic fuel level indicators are flush. Ensure that the fuel ventilation overpressure disc is intact and determine whether the fuel water drain valve, outer cell, surge tank, has no leaks. Additionally, ensure that the surge tank air inlet is clear.
Inspect the navigation light and wingtip to ensure that they are in good condition. Let us move on to the right wing trailing edge. Check the integrity of the static dischargers. and inspect the control surfaces to ensure that they are in good condition. Inspect the flaps and fairings to ensure that they are in good condition. Move on to the right main landing gear. Ensure that the chocks are removed if they are not required. Inspect the wheels for good condition. Check the tires for any cracks, damage, or delamination. Look at the brakes, the brake wear indicator, and the torque link damper to ensure that they are in good condition. Check the hydraulic lines for any leakage. Inspect the landing gear structure and downlock springs. The gear strut and actuators of the landing gear should be closely examined for cracks, nicks, cuts, corrosion damage, or any other condition that can cause stress concentrations and eventual failure. Confirm that the safety pin is removed. Ensure that the ground hydraulic connection for the yellow hydraulic system is closed. Inspect the shroud fuel drain to ensure that it is in good condition and has no leaks. Let us move on to the right aft fuselage. Check that the radio altimeter antennas are clean and in good condition. Inspect the aft cargo door and bulk door. Also inspect the aft cargo door selector panel. Verify that the toilet service access door is closed. Inspect the outflow valve for good condition. Check the general condition of the drain mast. Ensure that the flight recorder access door is closed. Let us move to the tail area. Check the stabilizer, elevator, fin and rudder for good condition. Check all the static dischargers on the vertical and horizontal stabilizer and ensure that they are undamaged. Mm -hmm. 
Inspect the lower fuselage structure to ensure that it is in good condition. Confirm that there is no tail strike damage. Let us move along to the APU. Ensure that the APU access doors are closed and properly latched. Check the condition of the air intake and the drain, ensuring that there are no leaks from the drain. Ensure that the oil cooler air outlet and the exhaust are clear of any obstructions. The navigation light should be in good condition. Confirm that the fire extinguishing overpressure indicator, red disc, is in place. Time to move on to the left aft fuselage. Continue to inspect the stabilizer, elevator, fin, and the rudder to ensure that they are in good condition. Ensure that the potable water service door is closed. The ground hydraulic connection doors for the glue hydraulic systems, the ground hydraulic connection doors for the green and reservoir filling door should also be closed. Move on to the left main landing gear. Ensure that the chalks are removed if they are not required. Inspect the wheels for good condition. Check the tires for any cracks, damage or delamination. Look at the brakes and brake wear indicator and the torque link damper to ensure that they are in good condition. Check the hydraulic lines for any sign of leakage. Check the landing gear structure and the downlock springs. The gear strut and actuators of the landing gear should be closely examined for cracks, nicks, cuts, corrosion damage, or any other condition that can cause stress concentrations and eventual failure. Confirm that the safety pin is removed. Let us move along to the left wing trailing edge. Inspect the flaps and fairings to ensure that they are in good condition. Check the integrity of the static dischargers.
and inspect the control surfaces to ensure that they are in good condition. Let us move on to the left wing leading edge. Inspect the navigation light and wing tip to ensure that they are in good condition. Ensure that the surge tank air inlet is clear and determine that the fuel water drain valve has no leaks. Ensure that the fuel ventilation overpressure discs are intact. Confirm that the inner and outer cell's magnetic fuel level indicators are flush and ensure that slats 2, 3, 4, and 5 are in good condition. Move along the wing to the left side of the number one engine. Inspect the pylon area for good condition and verify that the access panel is closed. Ensure that the turbine exhaust area is clear. Check that the oil fill access door is closed and latched. Ensure that the thrust reverser sleeves are closed and the blocker doors are properly stowed. Check that the fan cowl doors are closed and latched. Ensure that the drain mast is in good condition and has no leaks. Check the condition of the engine inlet, nose cone spinner, and fan blades. Check the metal blade edges for any damage and blade tips for any delamination. Let us move along to the right side of the number one engine. Check that the vent inlet is clear. Check that the pressure relief door and the start valve handle access door are closed. Ensure that the thrust reverser sleeves are closed and the blocker doors are properly stowed. Check that the fan cowl doors are closed and latched. Move on to the left center wing. Inspect slat 1 to ensure that it is in good condition. Note, a wing leading edge ventilation intake may be installed in this area. If installed, verify that it is clear of any obstructions. Ensure that the fuel water drain valve is not leaking and that the inner tank magnetic fuel level indicator is flush. Inspect the landing light to ensure that it is in good condition. Check that the hydraulic reservoir preservation door 
and the rat doors are closed. This concludes the exterior walk around inspection. If everything looks good, the aircraft is ready to fly. Have a safe flight.